Just a week to go from tonight until the midterms, and Election Day is finally becoming a referendum on something that really matters. Immigration. Who gets to live here? What does citizenship mean? What kind of country do we want? Consider the question of birthright citizenship. Under current interpretations of American law, anyone born on our soil automatically becomes a U.S. citizen. Context is irrelevant. It doesn't matter if your parents were tourists or illegal aliens or foreign saboteurs, if their plane was forced down to refuel and you emerged. It doesn't matter. If you were born on our property, you are a citizen. As a legal matter, it is an open question. The Supreme Court has never ruled on it. But there is ample reason to believe the law does not apply to illegal immigrants or birth tourists. Birthright citizenship arises from the 14th Amendment that was passed just three years after the Civil War. And it was passed to guarantee T citizenship to freed slaves. The senator who wrote the citizenship clause in the 14th Amendment, Jacob Howard of Michigan, explained the point of it on the Senate floor at the time. Quote, the amendment will not, of course, include persons born in the United States who are foreigners, aliens who belong to the families of ambassadors or foreign ministers, end quote. Again, the amendment was designed to ensure that newly freed slaves would be treated as the American citizens they were. The point was to enfranchise African Americans. The point was not to enable the rest of the world to scam our system. Globally, birthright citizenship is the rare exception. It is not the rule. Canada and the U.S. are the only developed countries that have birthright citizenship. Not a single European country allows it. Out of the 54 countries in Africa, only two offer birthright citizenship. Are the other 52 racist? How about Harry Reid? Is he a racist too? Watch the former Democratic Senate Majority Leader explain his views on birthright citizenship. If making it easy to be an illegal alien isn't enough, how about offering a reward for being an illegal immigrant? No, no sane country would do that, right? Guess again. If you break our laws by entering this country without permission and give birth to a child, we reward that child with U.S. citizenship and guarantee of full access to all public and social services this society provides. And that's a lot of services. Is it any wonder that two-thirds of the babies born at taxpayer expense at country, county-run hospitals in Los Angeles are born to illegal alien mothers? Now, as a factual matter, that's tougher than anything Donald Trump has ever said. Keep in mind that just four years ago, that man, Harry Reid, was the top Democrat in the Senate. Try saying that today. He'd be called Bull Connor and shouted off the stage. But the questions he raised are still fair questions. Is unlimited birthright citizenship helping this country or is it hurting this country? Under our current system, illegal immigrants who come to the U.S. and have children are eligible to receive tax credits, food stamps, other welfare benefits. Those are huge incentives. Not surprisingly, one in every 12 births in this country right now is to someone here illegally. And that total does not even include birth, birth tourism. Every year, tens of thousands of foreign nationals come to this country on tourist visas solely to give birth to children. The Chinese are strongly overrepresented in this. One ad in China offers, quote, high-end U.S. birth tourism specialists, end quote. For just 20 grand, these experts navigate clients through the process of having a child in America. In return for that 20 grand, their kids gain the right to Social Security, Medicare, countless other federal programs. If they come back to the U.S. for college, they get in-state tuition, federally backed student loans, financial aid, all the benefits that ought to be going to actual Americans who are drowning in college debt. This is a scam. There is no other word for it. And by the way, don't blame the Chinese or the Russians or the Salvadorans or anybody else using the system. We're the ones offering it. Why wouldn't they take it? The blame lies with us. No other country would allow itself to be relentlessly exploited like this for decades. And no other leadership class would side with foreigners over its own people. And yet ours does every time. And that tells you everything.